Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. We're doing the commentary on Hosea, the minor prophet. Let's go to chapter 3, get out your King James Bible. This is a short one. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress. Now, this is a physical reference to a spiritual thing. The Lord's talking about his love toward Israel, his bride, who was an adulteress. Spiritual adulteress. Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. You know what? Go to any Super Bowl party and watch the guys sit around and drink Budweiser. Well, I, I don't know if they still drink Budweiser, but uh, when I was of that persuasion, that's generally what my buddies drank. So they love flagons of wine. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for an omer of barley and a half homer of barley. So evidently this woman was in slavery and he bought her. I guess you could say redeemed her, just like Christ redeemed us from sin and death. Now, in the Old Testament, there was a provision for people who had a debt that they couldn't pay to sell themselves into bondage. So if you had a debt you couldn't pay, you could sell yourself into slavery or servitude, as some people called it, uh, matter of fact, in the beginning of this country, it was called an indentured servant. You would agree to work for somebody for a certain number of years, perhaps as an apprentice. Either way, you had a debt you couldn't pay. So, Hosea redeemed this woman. He bought her for the 15 pieces of silver and a homer and a half of barley. But that's only a shadow of what the Lord of is going to do for his bride. Let's read Luke chapter 1 of verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. And that's what redeeming means. Galatians 1, I'm sorry, Galatians 3 and verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. First Peter 1.18 Forasmuch as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. See, Hosea redeemed her with 15 pieces of silver. Christ redeemed us with his own blood redeemed us as slaves from the curse of sin and death. All right, let's take a look at Revelation 5, 9, and we'll get back to Hosea. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people, and nation. So let's go back to Hosea chapter 3. In verse 2 it says, So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for an homer of harley and a an half homer of barley. And I said unto her, said unto her Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot. Thou shalt not be for another man. 
so will I also be for thee. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without a sacrifice, and without an image, and without an ephod, and without teraphim. And who's going to be their king one day? Christ. What was the sacrifice? His death on the cross, right? Verse 5. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. Wasn't Christ of David? Oh, yeah. And shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. All right. So let's take a look at Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? All right, Revelation 5 and verse 3. And no man in heaven, nor in earth, nor under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Well, in Hosea 3 and verse 5, it said, Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king, and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. All right, let's go back to Revelation 5.5. 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David. Why is Christ called the Root of David? Because he created the earth and Adam. And uh, he's basically, he's the Root of David, but yet he is of the tribe of Judah. He, when he was born in the flesh. Read 1 Timothy 3.16. So the root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by, uh, th by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders and the number of them, was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever. Just a note, 
I think the four and twenty elders are the the sons of Jacob Israel, of the twelve tribes of Israel, and the um, the apostles, including Paul. A lot of people argue that, but uh, I think Paul's one of them. All right, let's go to Colossians chapter one, verse one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. You know what kills me is people will tell you that Paul's a false apostle. Yeah. Yeah, well, either I think they're listening to the devil, but uh, that's just my opinion. Verse 4. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epiros, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye, may, that ye might walk worthy of the Lamb unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance, inheritance, inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son in whom we have redemption. Redemption from what? From the curse of sin and death, people. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him, and who's him? Christ. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church. The church is the bride, people. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace... through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you, to present you holy and unblameable and un, un 
reprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for, my, for his body's sake, which is the church, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. All right, verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. So how can Jesus be the root and the offspring of David? He created all things, so he's the root. And yet, he was of the tribe of Judah, of the seed of David, in the flesh. Let's go to 1 Timothy 3.16. All right, 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy. See, this isn't even controversial. This is the real deal. Although a lot of people will deny this. Those claiming to be church people. And without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Now, a lot of false religions will teach that man can become God. But 1 Timothy 3.16 teaches that God became man, said God was manifest in the flesh. Isn't that wild? In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23, we read, Behold, a virgin, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now how come the Hebrew roots, sacred name people, don't use this name, Emmanuel, God with us. No, they got to use Yeshua or Hamashiach or, well, Yeshua, Yahshua, Yahushua, or whatever name. No, this Emmanuel is in the New Testament, but guess what? It's also in the Old Testament. That name is in both the Old and the New Testament. Go to Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which we just read means God with us. How come the Hebrew Roots people don't use that name? No, they got to use Yeshua, which appears absolutely nowhere in the Greek New Testament. And they'll tell you, well, you know, Jesus had a Hebrew family and that was his Hebrew name. Where's that in the Bible? No, it sounds like uh, fables to me. Emmanuel, you want to call him something? Call him Emmanuel, God with us. You see, people, the virgin birth is very important because sin nature fell upon Adam and all his descendants. Think about that. 
In Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Now, that's why the virgin birth is so important. They bypassed, they bypassed Adam and his curse of sin. Now, the Bible records, for all have sinned. But, did Christ sin? Well, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. See, Christ became the high priest. He was a high priest. He was a prophet. Uh, he was a lamb, the lion of Judah. I mean, he's held many offices. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not... All right, so, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. See, the Bible records, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Well, Jesus was yet without sin. Verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen to that, people. All right, well, that's going to be the end of the commentary on Hosea chapter 3. Boy, it's very short, but uh, I guess I'm long-winded, right? So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.